This video is going to cover how to install an SSL certificate using a Let's Encrypt certificate. The reason I'm making this video is because the Permissionless Software Foundation has bounties, uh, and one of the bounties is running Circuit Relays, which helps us run our mesh network for uh, providing access to the Bitcoin Cash blockchain in an uncensorable way or a censorship resistant way. <clears throat> and so we have these bounties to encourage people to set up circuit relays. And this video is part two. <clears throat> part one is on YouTube. And here's a link to it. Uh, you can search for it. Let me just bring that up. Part one shows how to set up a circuit relay on a node. And, uh, but it doesn't cover this is what the the video looks like. It's called Setting Up a Circuit Relay. It's under my Chris Troutner YouTube account. So definitely watch that first if you um, haven't watched it yet. And uh, so that shows how to set up a circuit relay. But IPFS nodes that run in the browser, they have to use secure web sockets. It's the only way they can connect to other nodes on the network. And so in that video, I showed how to set up a circuit relay, but I didn't show how to set up an SSL certificate, which you need in order to set up secure web sockets so that browser nodes can connect to you. And that's part of the bounty. So this video uh, is part two that shows how to set up that SSL cert and, and ensure that your circuit relay will work for browser-based nodes. So there's so the first part of this video is to watch part one, and after you've done that, you should have a circuit relay node running. So here I've got a circuit relay node running in on a VPS in the cloud. So this part two is going to pick up where part one left off. Uh, I left some notes. I created a, a gist on GitHub. Uh, here's the URL. If you're watching this video, I'll post this uh, link in the show notes if the, on YouTube. Uh, but if you don't have that handy, you can scan this QR code to get that same link. And yeah, here it is on on gist.github.com, and it's tied, titled SSL-how-2. This is going to have, this has some recipes and some code that we're going to copy and paste as we go. Um, so it'll be good for you to access this and be able to copy and paste that as well. So there's, there's roughly eight steps involved with getting uh, an SSL cert. You have to point your domain name, you have to register a domain name and point it at a name server. I'm going to use Namecheap for that, but you can use any register you want. The, the high level steps are the same, uh, regardless of the service provider you use. <clears throat> and then you need to add some A records for the host of the VPS. I'm going to be using DigitalOcean. Again, you can use whatever you want. Uh, and then install and set up a circuit relay from the previous video. I've already done that. And then we'll install Nginx which is a web server. Uh, and then we'll make sure that our domain name resolves using HTTP. Then we'll go get a Let's Encrypt SSL cert. And um, these last three steps are like the, the, the main thrust of this video is we'll get an SSL cert, we'll configure Nginx to, to provide web so secure web sockets, and then we'll test the connection with chat.fullstack.cache. So let's jump right in. So as I said, I use Namecheap as my as my uh, domain registrar, and I'm going to use this bchd.nl domain name. This is left over from a previous project that I had that I'm not using anymore. You can use any domain name you want. I like to use the .nl domain names for te for sort of prototypes like this when I don't care what the domain name is. Uh, they're cheap to register and they're they're cheap to renew. A lot of these domain names like .cache, they might be cheap to register, but then they're like three or four times the price to renew the next year. So I like the .nl. They're pretty cheap. And so if you use uh, Namecheap, you can find your domain and you can go to uh, like manage domain. 
and there will be this name server section and you want to point the name server at the uh, at your your host so I'm using DigitalOcean and I happen to know that their name server is ns1.digitalocean.com and ns2.digitalocean.com so now this domain name will go to DigitalOcean to be resolved so if you use a different register this ability will exist you just have to figure out where it exists and how to access it and then in DigitalOcean they have this networking section under the manage tab where you can add DNS records and so I've created this bchd.nl domain name inside DigitalOcean and these first three records were provided for me and I added these two A records. <clears throat> um, so there's different types of records, A, you know, A, 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 C name. These are the most common ones, TXT records. All you really need are these two A records. This first one, I use the at symbol and see how it resolved to the, that means like the domain name in total. And then I click there to put this IP address in. That's the VPS that I actually want it to resolve to. And then the star uh, is a wildcard. So, like, if someone types www.bchd.nl, it'll resolve to bchd.nl. So that's that's what these two A records do. So again, this process is a little different if you don't use DigitalOcean, but at a high level, it's the same. But the actual implementation is going to be a little different outside the scope of this video. So uh, the point is to have. Uh, the domain name point to uh, an IP address. That's that's ultimately what you want to get to. So I've done that, and here is the node running uh, the circuit relay. So if, uh, I can get rid of that git docker. So I've got my IPFS service provider running as a circuit relay. And in fact, if we uh, it's it's running as a Docker container in this example. And if I check that start production script, we can see that um, I set the name as demo SSL circuit relay. Uh, I've set the domain name as bchd.nl, and I've I've set circuit relay to true. So it's going to act as a circuit relay. It's going to broadcast itself as this domain name. And this is going to be the name, the human readable name to look look for this node on the network. <clears throat> so uh, we'll come back to that information in a minute. <clears throat> the next step is to install Nginx, which is a, a web server. Uh, and so for this, uh, I'm going to use apt install Nginx. <clears throat> And just like in the last video, I'm on an Ubuntu 18, or maybe this is Ubuntu 20 machine. This is the standard operating system that all the permissionless software, foundation software targets. Okay, so Nginx is installed, and I've already got the IP address of this uh, VPS set up. So let's just make sure that Nginx is going to serve a web page. And it is. So we so after we install Nginx, we now get this sort of Nginx welcome uh, message. And now that we've done that, let's try and see if the domain name will resolve. So this is using HTTP and not HTTPS. And it's going to be bchd.nl. Okay, and it's saying unable to connect. And notice that the browser is forcing me to use HTTPS. That's because it has a cache. So in this case, I need to manually check it. <clears throat> Let's remove that index.html file. OK, I can use wget bchd.nl. So I got an index file back. OK, and if I look into it, it's the same Nginx message. So it is resolving, even though my browser is trying to be a little too smart. And so that's, that's what you want to see. You wanna, before you move on, you want to make sure that this resolves, that, that the, the domain name is, is resolving with just the typical HTTP. If, uh, if that's not happening, then, then do not move forward because the, the rest of the Let's Encrypt stuff will not work. You need to have an HTTP uh, page resolving. In fact, let me just try another browser. 
this is what you can do too if, if your browser ends up giving you giving you problems. I don't want that. Okay, let's go HTTP bchd.nl. Okay, there we go. Now it resolved, and it didn't have the cache, so I didn't have the same problem. So again, this is that you want to make sure that that if this comes up, if you put in that domain name and this comes up, that means that you've completed the first couple steps correctly and that you've got your domain name pointing at your name server and you've got your name server resolving to these A records, which is successfully pointing to the VPS, which is serving Nginx. So this is basically the basic prerequisite. You've got to get to this first before you install an SSL cert. Okay, so we've, we've completed these four steps. <clears throat> so the bulk of this exercise is in these last four steps. And so we've ensured that the domain name resolves, so now we can get an SSL cert. So this is where my notes on, let's close this window. This is where my notes on, uh, on this GitHub gist are gonna come in. So we, we've already installed Nginx and the file that Nginx is configured with is in etc. Nginx sites available. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> so these hash signs are uh, are comments, and there's some of these areas that are uncommented out. If we were to copy and paste this and remove all the comments, this is what we'd end up with. This is what's actually in that file. So it. Let's read through this real quick. It's it's serving port 80, which is the standard for a web page. It's serving the files from this directory. And it's serving some combination of index.html. And this underscore is like a wild card. It's like some some server. We haven't defined what the what the domain name is. It's just gonna if it sees something port 80, it's gonna answer it. And so these try files, it tries the requested URI. If that doesn't work, it tries the URI with a slash, and if that doesn't work, it bails out with a 404 error. So that's essentially what this uh, Nginx config is doing for us right now, and this is what we're gonna gonna ultimately edit. <clears throat> um, so we'll skip past this for a minute. We need to install Certbot. Now these, this is like a recipe that we're gonna follow. Let me go ahead and start getting this started here. So I'm starting to install CertBot, and this uses Python, and it changes a little bit over time. So it's currently October 30th, 2021. If you're watching this and a significant period of time has passed, it, uh, this recipe may change slightly. Uh, namely, like sometimes these libraries, uh, you have to add libraries or upgrade the libraries. But CertBot is the program that Let's Encrypt puts out there to, to help people uh, obtain SSL certificates. Okay. Zop. Okay, now we can install CertBot. Okay, and this will just test that CertBot's installed correctly. Okay, so we've got CertBot one version 1.20 installed. So now, um, so in these examples, replace your domain.com with your domain. And so now we can request a cert, uh, a, an SSL cert. So let's go ahead and just clear the terminal. sudo CertBot cert only web root var and we know that this is the directory because this is what's in the nginx config so we're just matching that to this part this is the directory the files are being served from and then dash d is the domain name so we're going to go bchd.nl and this is why it's important that your domain name resolves because when i 
execute this command, certbot's going to issue a series of challenges to make sure that this machine resolves to that domain name. Uh, yes, I agree to the terms. No, don't send me spam. Now it's doing those challenges. Uh, successfully receive certificate. Here's where the private key and the certificate live. Those are going to be handy. We're going to use those in a minute. And so now that we have successfully gotten a certificate, <clears throat> we need to create a couple configuration files for Nginx. So if I go back into the engine, uh, etc., Nginx directory, there's the sites available, which is where that default config file is, and then there's um, is the snippets directory. And we need to add a couple files in here. There's already a couple files in there. So um, oh, one other thing is we got to create a key pair. So just copy and paste this command. And it's going to create a key pair and store it in this file in this directory. And that's fine. Uh, so now we need to create these, um, create this file sslyourdomain.com.conf Let me see if I can position this. Okay, so, and you got to use sudo <clears throat> to have root access. And I'm using the nano text editor sslbchd.nl.conf. Uh, and I'm going to copy these two lines into it. And I'm going to replace yourdomain.com with the domain that I am using bchd.nl bchd.nl okay um, okay so that's that file that looks like it's been correct this basically points to those the private key and certificate that we just got from let's encrypt and then next I need to create this SSL params comp file and I just copy and paste this code in here. <clears throat> I don't need to edit it. Okay, so that that sets up, uh, that basically configures our, our SSL certificate. So now we can go back into the sites available, which is where this default config file is, which again is just, is just this code. Uh, uh, if we were to remove all the comments. And we're going to edit that file and we're going to make it look like this. And basically it's the same config file. We just added these two lines which set, sets up port 443 which is HTTPS. And we add the two um, the two config files that we just added. And in fact we might as well change the server name to bchd.nl. So let's go ahead and copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that default file which we know works. To a file called original. And then I'm going to create a new file called default. And I'm going to paste in that config stuff. I can see I need to edit this to match the domain name and file I created, bchd.nl. And I'm going to change the server name to bchd.nl. And that should be all I need to do. So I'm going to hit Control Exit and Yes to save. And then let's check that we didn't uh, make a typo by running uh, nginx-t. That'll check the config file. It says syntax is OK, so it has no problem with the config file. It can read it. So now we can restart nginx with system D. System Control Restart. Nginx. That'll restart the web server and load the new configuration file that we just edited. 
So now is the moment of truth. We're going to go HTTPS bchd.nl and see if this resolves. And it is. We now get that same Nginx uh, welcome message with a dat, uh, with SSL. So our SSL cert is working. And now we need to configure Nginx for secure WebSockets. And let's look at that recipe that I have here. So we need to edit this part. And to do that, I have an example from another site that I've set up. So I'm going to copy this, this code here. And OK, so we've got this. And we changed this to bchd.nl. And we changed this to bchd hd.nl. So this matches the config that we have running right now. What we need to add is the ability to do WebSockets. And here is an example from fullstack.cache. There are those snippets. And it's this right here where we We're going to comment out this line. We're going to upgrade the HTTP version for WebSockets. And then we're going to proxy the connection to our circuit relay. Oh, and then this little snippet here, we're going to add two different locations. So this dot well known, this is used by Let's Encrypt when it renews the certificate. So in that case, <clears throat> we're going to refer back to the same directory that we just used in the same response that we just used so that we get the same results. But for everything else, we're going to uh, proxy it to the circuit relay. And sudo apt install net tools. This if config command, you need to install that net tools in order to look at the IP addresses that this VPS is using. And we need the IPF address or the IP address of the Docker container, which is always the same 172.17.0.1. We're going to proxy to that IP address and then the IPFS service is running here and there's port 5001 which is the rest server and 5268 in fact if we just go into the git repository production docker this start production script is what's set in our WebSocket port is 5269 so we need to proxy to that port so basically, Nginx is going to receive the call on port 443. It's going to know how to interact with the call and decrypt the message because of the SSL cert. And then it will pass that information onto our Docker container to the WebSocket port. That's essentially what this config is doing. So if we go back into the Nginx directory, go back to sites available. <clears throat> I'm going to, because this default file is working, I don't want to delete it, I'm just going to move it um, to a file called working. And I'm going to create a new default file. And I'm going to copy this code into it. And let's do T, oh, it's saying at line 62, which there is not a line 62. My guess is I probably messed up these snippets somehow. So rather than figure that out, I'm just going to get that the working file that we know is working. I'm going to edit that instead. 
Okay, so we know this one's working. Not sure what the difference is, but let's copy this in and let's copy this in. Okay, those should be the only changes we need. such working directory default what oh def oh that's the problem <laughs> that was cuz i was didn't name it default i named it default okay okay that was the problem all right syntax pass let's restart system control restart engine x Okay, now I'm not sure what's going to happen if we refresh this. Let's see what happens. So what happened when we tried to connect with it with the web browser is that uh, it timed out because now the uh, it's not responding to HTTP requests; it's responding to WebSocket requests. Uh, so that was the result of that. So now that this is set up and our WebSockets appears to be configured, we need to test it. And the best way to test it uh, is to use a browser-based node. That's how we know for sure that it's working. But in order to do that, we need to get a connection string. So the, the go-to uh, tool for interacting with, with this new paradigm of IPFS, uh, JSON RPC over IPFS, is this BCH wallet, PSF BCH wallet. I've got it here. I'm going to run it in daemon mode, which is going to spin up an IPFS node, and it's going to reach out and connect to the other nodes on the network, which should include the node we just set up at bchd.nl. And mainly what I'm doing is I'm just making sure this is sort of a sanity check just to make sure that it can connect to it. Um, and that we can get the connection string that we need in order to test it in our browser-based node. So if I go um, help, I can see the commands. And what I want to run is this IPFS peers with a dash A to get all the info on all the IPFS peers that, that this is connected to. We're going to look for our, for our service. Here's generic service. I'm looking at the the name. So that's in Singapore, uh, California. Demo. Demo SSL circuit relay. That's what we set up. NIR5. And it's... advertising itself let's see node.js here we go advertising itself as bchd.nl tcp port is 5268 um, so where is that actual connection string well we know that We know that uh, here's the IP address, this is the domain name, and here's the VPS that is running the actual circuit relay. We know what ports it's using here. And in fact, just to confirm that port 5269 is in fact our WebSocket connection, we can go into the GitHub repository and go to the Docker container. And look at this start production shell script. And right here we can see how we configured our ports. Port 5269 is for WebSockets. 
this is another gist that uh, of of other circuit relays that are known. So we can just kind of follow these multi adder patterns. So, for example, here is, uh, and again, if you want to take a look at this one, this is not linked in the in the main gist, but it, it's under my Chris Troutner gists called PSF Circuit Relays. Uh, IPFS Cord actually downloads this. Um, it's like a second bootstrap. And so we can just copy one of these browser-based multi-adders and sort of piece together what we know about ours. So we we set ours up at... Uh, bchd.nl the TCP is going to be 443 because that's that's secure uh, and then it's going to be the web socket and we need the IPFS address of our node which we can get from our docker container uh, let's see we're going to use the IPFS service and it's reported at the top so we're going to Pipe it to the head command and look at the first hundred lines. I think I messed that up. The first hundred lines. There we go. So this is what it reports when it's first starting the node up. It reports its multi adders and there's its IPFS ID NIR5. So we're going to replace this. So this is our connection string. This is what we should be able to connect to. So if we go back to our gist for these directions, uh, we're now down in this section called test the WebSocket connection. So we managed to piece together this, this uh, multi-adder that we need to connect. And uh, if we follow the link to this gist, which I have, well, let's just follow the link to this gist, the second gist. This is a HTML file that will open when you open it in your browser. So basically you just copy and paste this content into a file with a .html extension and then open it in your browser, it will, uh, create a browser-based IPFS node. Oh, that's the same gist. And that's what I've got running right here. This is what it looks like when you open that file. It'll spin up an IPFS node and then it'll put the ID of that node right there. And you can interact with the IPFS node with this node variable. So if I go await node swarm peers the node's currently connected to nine different IPFS peers. Now we can try to connect to our multi-adder over WebSockets with await node swarm connect and then enclose the multi-adder in, in double quotes. And if it works, it should come back with undefined, just like that. But if we now look at our list of peers, we'll see that we're connected to 10 nodes now, and there is our node, NIR5. So we have this this was the test. This successfully this proves that we successfully set up WebSockets and a browser-based node can connect to it. If there was a misconfiguration and this was not configured properly, I happen to know that uh, let's see, this Singapore node is not configured correctly so this is going to return an error so let's just look and see what it would look like if we try if if we were not configured correctly and, and a browser node could not connect it would be await node swarm connect and then so if it was na not able to connect it'll return a bunch of error messages There we go, just like that. It'll say, can't establish a connection, da 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 da. So this is what you'd see if it's not configured correctly. Uh, if the multi-adder was wrong, or you had this 
IPFS ID wrong or your Nginx config was configured incorrectly, uh, all these things would would not work correctly. Or you know, you'd, you'd get it, all those all those types of misconfigurations would give you this error. So so if you see this, you just have to work backwards and try and figure out what's causing it.